بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Back again after growth and development Do you remember what we have said in the growth and development? Growth and development are the exact life at the individual level You remember For optimal growth and development We have to have specific nutritive element in their best quality This usually comes from nutrition so we will raise up the first statement in this presentation that is nutrition is the fowl of life as usual before going through nutrition we have to check your concept please answer the questions keep the answer in your mind re-answer again at the end of the lecture after delivery oral glucose should be given regularly two hourly for 12 hours is it true or false Preparation of the breastfeeding start immediately after delivery. This is true or false. Breast milk composition depend on the mother's intake. True, false. Sick mother should not breastfeed her baby. True, false. Breastfeeding is a reliable method of contraception. True or false. Feeding should be given round the clockwise. Breastfeeding. True or false? Unmodified cow's milk can be given before the first birthday. True or false? Formula feeding is better than breastfeeding. True, false. Weaning should be started as early as possible. True or false? Keep the answer in your mind to re-answer again at the end of the presentation. As we raised up the first statement that nutrition is the fowl of life which is a very important item so no good nutrition no adequate nutrition no good life at the end of this lecture we have to know very important items about feeding and nutrition the second statement should be raised up which is another very important statement is that milk is the best nutrition milk is the best diet milk is nearly a complete diet Forever, for every person, especially in infancy, especially in the first year of life, which is called the vulnerable period. You know, the vulnerable period of life is the first year of life. And why it is vulnerable? Because as we know before from the growth, this period usually is spent up for the growth of central nervous system. Do you remember the growth pattern? The central nervous system, the pattern of growth increased steadily in the first two years of life, then nearly plateau till adolescence. In contrast to the genital pattern of growth, if you remember, which remained baseline till 12 years of age, then start to increase near the adolescence. The physical pattern of growth steadily grow, steadily increase with two spurts. The first spurt at the age of two years and the second spurt at the adolescence. So this is the first year of life is considered as a vulnerable period of life. Adequate nutrition, adequate vaccinations is very essential for health of the central nervous system. Now, milk is the best nutrition. Milk is the best diet. What are the types of milk? What's prepared by Allah for human is the breast milk. What's prepared by Allah for animals is fresh fluid animal milk. What's prepared by human for human, this is dried or powdered milk. So we have to go through such types of milk and to know the difference between both of them. The first thing, the, and the, the third statement, and the, the most important statement should be raised up today, is that breast is the best. So, we have to discuss some items about breast milk feeding. Al-Quran al-Kareem fi ayat kathira, hawla rada'a tabi'iyya, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wal-walidatu yurdu'na awladahunna hawlayni kamilayni liman arada an yutimma rada'a, wa hamluhu wa fisaluhu thalathuna shahra, وأوحينا إلى أم موسى أن أرضعيه هذا أمر مباشر من الله عز وجل لاستخدام البريست البريست فيدينج سو بريست إن ذا بيست ريمبر أجين ذيس إز واتس الله بريبيرد فور هيومن وين وي ار جوينج تو ديسكاس بريست فيدينج ذا ستيتمنت إز بريست ميلك فيدينج ذيس ستيتمنت كونتينينج ثري مين ووردز بريست ميلك أند فيدينج so you have to talk in brief about the breast, 
We have to talk in details about the milk, and we have to talk in brief about the feeding practice and the feeding process. This is important point. Talking about the breast, the breast composition is an important item to know from the practical point of view. The breast is composed, as you see in the, in the picture, the breast is composed of many compartments, each compartment containing a sinai and duct system. A sinai is the area where the milk is produced in, and the duct system. Each loop will give rise to one duct system. The duct system will connect it together to make one major duct to open into the nipple. Before opening into the nipple, there is a reservoir, what's called the lactiferous sinus. This is a very important area. Lactiferous sinus is a reservoir, is present beneath the areola. Areola, not the nipple. What is the importance of these structures from the practical point of view? It is very important. You know the suckling mechanism. Suckling is not suctioning. Suckling is a rhythmic contraction of the mandible of the infant. So the gum should be placed over the areola, not over the nipple. Once the gum is over the areola, so rhythmic contraction of the mandible will squeeze and release, squeeze and release, squeeze the lactiferous sinus, so ejecting the milk in the mouth, and release, so it will refill again. So this process is very important. If you don't know about this process, putting the nipple only in the infant mouth will give rise to air, suckling of air, cracking of the nipples, suckling of air, will give rise to vomiting, abdominal distension, constipations, colicky veins, and there are cracking of the nipples. So very important to know about this. The mother should introduce the nipple and the areola in the infant mouth, and the areola should be under the gum, okay, to get the benefit of rhythmic contraction of the mandible, so the feeding is squeeze, release, squeeze, release, squeeze, release. Very important item. So this is the first part regarding the breast. Still, we are inside the breast. What is the physiology of the breastfeeding? Is it important for us? Yes. There are two main reflexes at the maternal side involved in the process of breastfeeding. The first reflex, as you see here by the arrow, uh, suckling of the breast will start a reflex, stimulation of the hypothalamus, consequently stimulation of the anterior pituitary to release prolactin. Prolactin is the milk, is the hormone responsible for milk production. Another reflex, suckling of the nipple will stimulate the posterior pituitary to give rise to a, another hormone, which is oxytocin. This oxytocin will give rise to contraction of the myoepithelial cells around the acini and the causes ejection of milk. So how the milk is formed? It is formed through a reflex mechanism initiated by suckling through a prolactin hormone. How the milk is ejected? Through another reflex, which is called the let down reflex. This reflex is also initiated by suckling. So there is no milk as there is no suckling. Suckling is the most important point for continuation of the milk production and the milk ejection. These are the reflexes at the maternal side. Remember, we are talking about breast milk feeding. We are still in the first part, the breast. We know about the uh, uh, physiology of the breast, the anatomy of the breast, physiology of the breast. So those are the reflexes at the maternal side involved in the process of breastfeeding. What are the reflexes at the infant side to complete this cycle? The infant have three main reflexes, rooting reflex, sucking reflex, and the swallowing reflex. It is important to know about it, yes. What about the rooting reflex? Rooting reflex, the stimulus is stimulation of the angle of the mouth, either by the nibble, or by the finger, or by one drop of milk, this is a stimulus. What is the response? The infant will turn the head toward the side of stimulation, open his mouth, and take the nipple inside the mouth. So this is the stimulus, and this is the response. The second reflex, sucking reflex, start from the end of the first reflex. Sucking reflex, what is the stimulus for the sucking reflex? Presence of the nipple into the mouth will stimulate the soft palate and the hard palate. This is the stimulus. What is the response? Rhythmic contraction of the mandible. This is the second reflex, the sucking reflex. What about the third reflex, the swallowing reflex? Started also from the end of the second reflex. The presence of milk in the mouth, in the oropharynx, will stimulate coordinated contraction of the pharyngeal muscles to enhance the process of swallowing. Is it important to know? Yes. So the mother, when the mother is going to breastfeed her baby, 
it is better to stimulate the rooting reflex either by the nipple itself or by one drop of milk uh, at the lower lip or at the corner of the mouth. So this will initiate and stimulate the rooting reflex. Once the infant opened his mouth, the mother should introduce the nipple and the, the areola. Remember, the areola is very, very important because there is the lactiferous sinus under this areola. Once the nipple and the areola are inside the mouth, then the second reflex will start, the sucking reflex, which causes the rhythmic contraction of the mandible, squeezing the lactiferous sinus and the release, squeezing and release, squeezing and release, resulting in ejection of the milk inside the mouth. The presence of milk inside the mouth will stimulate the third reflex, which is called the swallowing reflex. So knowing about this mechanism is very important for the mother and for the infant for proper feeding practice. The most common, remember, the most common cause of abdominal distension in young infant and the most common cause of colic in young infant is sucking of air, aerophagia. How come the aerophagia? Because the mother does not know the mechanism of feeding, does not know the reflexes involved in the process of feeding. So putting the nipple alone inside the mouth will give rise to gas, aerophagia, <coughs> sucking of air only, because suckling is not suctioning. Suctioning the nipple will give rise to collapse of the duct system. It is a process of a squeeze and release, a squeeze and release. So suckling is not suctioning. So the mother should know about this and the infant should know about this, should be trained for that. This is an important point. This is the first part, the breast. We said breast, milk, feeding. We know about the breast regarding the anatomy, regarding the physiology at the maternal side and the physiology at the infant side. Now another, and we are still in the breast, another very important point from the practical point of view also, preparation of the breast for feeding. How can we prepare the breast for feeding? Preparation of the breast for feeding should start before conception, should be conti continued throughout pregnancy to be ready immediately after delivery. It is a bad surprise for the infant to, after delivery, to find the breast with flat nibble, with a small nibble, with inverted nibble, too large, too small, milk engorgement. This is a bad surprise for the infant. It should not happen. It should not be there. Now we are going to the milk itself. We said this is the breast, milk, feeding. We discussed, give some idea in brief about the breast. What about the milk? The milk, that's what's prepared by Allah for human, which is one of the major things in the world, in the life. The composition of the breast milk vary from day to day, vary from day to night. Even there is variations at the feeding level itself, at the feed itself. Yes, what's called the diurnal variations. What's diurnal variations? This is very important to know about it also. The breast milk composition in the early morning differs from the breast milk composition at the evening. What's the difference? The fat content at the evening is more than in the, even, than in the morning. The breast milk at the beginning of feed is different from the composition at the end of the feed. The same feed. What's the difference? The end of the feed, the fat content of the breast milk is higher than at the beginning. The beginning of the feed is called the fore milk, and the end of the feed is called the hind milk. And well, had a hikmah. What's the difference? Why this is the difference? The, the, there is a difference. At the end of the milk, in the hind milk, the fat content is higher to control obesity and to control appetite. If the fat content is higher at the beginning of the feed in the form milk, this is nauseating for the infant and may give rise to obesity. Why at the end of the day, the fat content in the milk is higher than the fat content at the early morning? Because the fat at the end of the day, when the infant get more fat, he will sleep most of the, of the night safely and uh, uh, he feels satisfaction. This is important. However, the human milk composition is usually the same between different women with few variations. Now, the breast milk, the breast secretions, what are the breast secretions? The breast secretions vary in three stages. There is colostrum, this is the breast secretion in the first three to five days of life, then transitional milk over a few weeks, then we reach at the end to the mature milk. What about, what is the difference between the colostrum and the mature milk? Is it important? Why there are the, these variations? Colostrum is a very important part of the human milk. 
because this colostrum is prepared mainly for protection rather than nutrition. To be for protection, the protein content is high, mainly immunological substance, lactoferrin, lysozymes, leukocytes, immunological elements, as we will talk about it after. Less fat, less lactose. So this colostrum is mainly to protect the GIT of the infant, to protect the respiratory tract of the infant, to enhance the immune response of the infant, rather than nutritive value. So the main difference is that the protein is very high. The fat and lactose is less than in the mature milk. Also, there is the sodium, chloride, potassium, calcium, magnesium are higher than mature milk. Transitional milk, this is, will be changed by day, day, uh, 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 daily. There are changes in the milk composition to reach the final mature milk composition. The mature milk, usually by the age of four to six weeks postpartum, the full mature milk and the, the known composition of the mature milk is achieved. This, is, uh, this diagram shows the difference between colostrum and the milk. You see here, the uh, uh, colostrum, the protein content in the colostrum is more than the mature milk. The lactose content is less, the fat content is less than the mature milk. The, what, what is the difference between this and this? This is the fore milk and this is the hind milk. The milk secretion is in the first, in the, in the early morning, and this is the late evening. Or the secretion at the beginning of feed and the secretions and the breast secretions at the end of the day, or at the end of the feed. Now, again, we said that milk is the best diet. What do we mean by diet? Diet containing two main compartments, caloric element of the diet and non-caloric element of the diet. Caloric element of the diet, which gives us to calories, including protein, fat, carbohydrates. Non-caloric elements of the diet, which will not give rise to calories, including water and ashes. What do we mean by ashes? Vitamins and minerals. They are very important, but they are not caloric. They are non-caloric element of the diet. So about the composition of the human milk, the best diet, it containing water, most of the content are water, protein, lipids, carbohydrate, and ashes. So we are going, going to discuss item by item to see what Allah prepared for human. Protein, pressed milk protein, the composition of the pressed milk protein, the quantity is nearly one gram per deciliter. This protein, 70% whey protein and 30% casein protein. Is it important? Yes. Casein protein is difficult to be digested in the stomach, in the acid media. It will form a thick curd and difficult to be digested and absorbed. Fortunately, its amount is less than whey protein. So whey protein, more digestible. It, can, it represents about 70% of the pressed milk protein. And even this whey protein containing lactalbumin, lactoglobulin, lactoferrin, and lysozymes. Another important point, the lactoalbumin is dominating rather than lactoglobulin. Is it advantageous? Yes. Because lactoglobulin is the part of the protein responsible for the allergy. So the breast milk is less allergenic than other types of milk. So whey protein is more, so it is more easily digested, easily absorbed. The content of lactoalbumin is more, so it is less allergenic. It contains also another protein structures which is helping immunity as lysozymes and lactoferrin, as they will come later, and secretory IgE. These are important, yes. And also the protein and the breast milk containing most of the essential amino acids. Do you remember the essential amino acid? They are 10 in numbers. Phenylalanine, tryptophan, hist uh, histidine, isoleucine, arginine, lysine, methionine, leucine, therionine, valine. All of these essential amino acids are present in the breast milk. So the pressed milk protein is highly effective regarding the quantity and regarding the quality. This is the pressed milk protein. What about the fat, the lipid content? The lipid content in the pressed milk is about 3.5% nearly. And the, the lipid in the pressed milk is another very important part. It's containing a small globules of fat. And these fats containing mainly non-volatile fatty acids to decrease the abdominal distension. This fat containing essential fatty acids, polyunsaturated fatty acids, oleic, linoleic, and arachidonic acids. This is very important. And this fat 
easily digested, easily absorbed, and it is a very good source of energy. The infant usually get about 50% of his energy from this fat. Another point where are the researchers are uh, running nowadays. The breast milk fat had a unique character than any other fat. Because you know the glycerol component, there is palmitic acid attached to the carbon number two. And this attachment to the carbon number two is a very important. Why it is important? Other lipids, other fats present in the diet, present in other forms of fresh fluid animal milks, the palmitate is attached to the site number one and site number three. Is it different? Is it different? Yes. When the palmitate is attached to the site number one and the site number three, when it is digested, this palmitate will be separated and react with calcium and interfere with the calcium absorption. When the palmitate attached to the carbon number two in the glycerol component, when it is separated, it will not affect the calcium absorption. That's why most of the researchers nowadays try to modify formulas for the palmitate to be attached to the site number two, to be closely similar to the breast milk. This is an important. A lot, a lot of researchers are running through this area nowadays. So this is the breast milk lipids. Is it good? It is an excellent. Exactly as the breast milk protein. Again, what about the carbohydrate, the breast milk carbohydrate? The carbohydrate content of the breast milk represents about 7%, 7 grams per deciliter. And this carbohydrate mainly in the form of beta-lactose. Is it important to be in the form of beta-lactose? What are the advantages? Very important. It is a source of energy. This is a clean source of energy. You can use a carbohydrate as a source of energy without uh, significant twists. Only water and the carbon dioxide easily removed from the body. This beta-lactose will be digested in the intestine to be divided into glucose and galactose. And what is the importance of this beta-galactose? Very important. Galactose is an essential component for the brain because the brain is galactolipids. This is number one. Number two, galactose is the main nutrition or the main nutritive element for bifidus bacteria in the intestine. In the intestine, we have commensal bacteria and the pathogenic bacteria. This beta-galactose is this, the main nutri nutritive value of the main nutritive element for this commensal bacteria. So the commensal bacteria will enhance, will flourish, okay? and the, the pathogenic bacteria will decline, will decrease in number. Once the bifidus bacteria or lactobacillus acidophilus enhanced and increased in number, it will give rise to what's called growth promoting factor, which enhancing the growth. So carbohydrate is also another element, another excellent element, beta lactose. Remember, in the fresh fluid animal milk, the lactose there is less in quantity and is less in quality. It is formed in the form of alpha lactose. But in the breast milk, it is in the form of beta lactose, which is very important to enhancing the growth and to enhancing the integrity and the growth of the central nervous system. Another excellent item. So this is the protein, this is the fat, and this is the carbohydrate content. What else, what other elements the breast milk contain? It contains another important elements. Contain minerals, a lot of minerals. Contain a lot of vitamins. It seemed for the vitamin D to be less than other types of milk. However, it is sufficient. It seems that vitamin C is less than other types of milk. However, it is sufficient. Calcium and phosphate seems to be less than other types of milk, as we will see later. But its ratio is optimal for its absorption. Remember, this breast milk, what Allah prepared for human. The breast milk also containing a lot of issues, containing enzymes, as lipase enzyme, catalase enzyme, protease enzyme, containing hormones, as prolactins, thyroid stimulating hormones. Hormones in the breast milk, yes. Enzymes in the breast milk, yes. You have to see the fat content in the breast milk is 3.5%, and there is lipase enzyme with this fat. So Allah give us the fat and give us the digestion the digestive enzyme for that fact. There is also growth factors as insulin growth factor one and insulin growth factor two in the breast milk. So breast milk, again, breast is the best. Do you agree? Yes, regarding the quantities and the qualities. Another important issues in the breast milk, which are the anti-infective functions of the breast milk. The breast milk enhances the immunity, the immune response of the body. And this anti-infective properties of the breast milk is a unique character because it is heat labile. So the breast milk from the factory, 
direct to the infant, to the, con to, to the consumer. So there is no heating in between. Heating will destroy most of these anti-infective properties. What are the anti-infective functions? The prismal containing antibodies. Antibodies, yes, especially IgA, containing also IgM, IgG, IgE, IgD, yes, in abundant amount. But the majority is IgA. It containing also antibodies against certain diseases, specific antibodies against E. coli, specific antibodies against poliomyelitis, specific antibodies against encephalitis virus. That's why if the infant is going to have an oral polio vaccine, it is better to stop breastfeeding two hours before and two hours after because the breast milk containing antibodies against polio virus. So it will damage the vaccine. This is the antibodies. It containing also cellular elements, containing leukocytes, macrophages, containing lymphocytes, polymorphic nuclear leukocytes. Yes, these are cells involved in the process of immunity. And it contain also another important element as lactoferrin, which combined with iron and oxygen, preventing the E. coli from utilizing this. Contain bifidus factor, contain an interferon, fibronectin, lysozymes, a lot of immunological elements. So the infant, breastfed infant, is less likely to have GIT disorders, GIT infections, is less likely to have urinary tract infections, is less likely to have upper respiratory infections or even lower respiratory infections because of these anti-infective properties, which is another excellent item in the breast milk. So again, breast is the best. Breast is the best. So what are the advantages of breastfeeding other than the anti-infective properties? There are a lot of advantages. It contains, as we saw, as we have seen, just have seen, that it have a specific nutritive elements in their pest quality. This is number one. It have an anti-infective properties. This is number two. There are another advantages not related to the milk composition itself, because this milk is cheap, available all the time. The temperature is adjusted, suitable for most of the children. This is a very important. So again, the, uh, 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 we have found that the breast milk infants have less incident of immune-mediated disorders. Diabetes mellitus is less in the breastfed infant. Crohn's disease is less. Asthma, eczema, allergic gastroenteritis, all are less. We are talking about the advantages of the breast milk. What is the advantage of the breast feeding? The feeding practice, the feeding process, direct contact between the mother and the infant will enhance the mother-infant psychological bond. And it will also give the chance for the mother to look at the baby several times a day. So she can pick up any disorders early. She can notice if the patient is jaundiced or not. The patient is have abdominal distension or not. Any troubles, any disorders, any abnormalities could be picked up early by the mother because of this close contact and it will enhance the mother-infant psychological bond. This is for the mother and this is for the infant. Again, the breastfeeding, is it important for the mother? Yes, it's very important for the mother. The, the previous slides were talking about the advantage of breastfeeding from the infant side. But what are the advantages from the maternal side? It is important because as we said before, it is cheap, easily available, ready to use, adjusted temperature, and for the mother, contraction of the myobithelial cells and the asinine through oxytocin will help also contraction of the genital tract. So it helps revolution of involution of the genital tract after delivery. And also the breastfeeding is considered as a natural method of contraception. But for the breastfeeding to be a natural method of contraception, it should be around the clockwise day and night. This to be a natural method of contraception. But omitting some feeds, this will affect the contraceptive activity and the contraceptive efficacy of the breastfeeding. This is important item also. It will decrease the postpartum blood loss and help rapid involution of the uterus due to uh, uh, oxytocin production. And it has also an economic benefit. Another important point to talk about regarding the breast milk feeding. What are the contraindications of breast milk feeding, breast feeding. Are there contraindications? Yes. 
The contraindications are divided into absolute contraindications, at which the breastfeeding is absolutely forbidden, and relative contraindications. What are the absolute contraindications? Absolute contraindications is usually due to metabolic disorders or important errors of metabolism at the infant side, as phenylketonuria, galactosemia, lactose intolerance. These are the absolute contraindications. This infant should use a phenylalanine-free formula, should use lactose-free formula, but the breast milk is abundant in phenylalanine and in uh, lactose. So this is an absolute contraindication. What are the relative contraindications? What, what do we mean by relative contraindications? The mother may breastfeed her baby under certain circumstances, according to the circumstances, according to her condition, according to the condition of her baby. Like what the relative contraindication? Untreated procellosis, untreated tuberculosis, HIV mother, severe malnourished mother, H1N1 infection. And if the mother received uh, uh, medication that is excreted in the breast milk, may affect the infant. So we have to stop the breastfeeding during that period for the chemotherapy, for ergotamine, for amphetamines, and etc. If the mother receiving radioactive compounds, there is temporary cessation for this. Few another practical points to be uh, highlighted. Regarding the mother's diet, the mother who breastfed her baby, if the infant have an allergy to a certain element, it is advised for the mother to avoid these elements in her diet. For example, if the patient is, had an allergy for the cow's milk protein, has cow's milk protein allergy, it is advised for the mother not to drink milk, cow's milk, during the period of lactation. If the infant have an allergy to chocolate, it is advised for the mother to avoid chocolate in her uh, diet. This is important because some of these elements will be excreted in the breast milk and will give rise to allergic manifestation of the infant. Another important point, if the infant have G6PD, glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme deficiency, it is advised for the mother not to use fava beans in her diet during the process of feeding. Because this may give rise to hemolysis and avoiding this will minimize the risk of hemolysis for such infants. These are some important points. Another important point is to talk about it. Is the diet, the maternal diet, affecting the composition of the breast milk? To some extent, few variations are there. But usually the breast milk composition is usually almost fixed. If the mother did not receive calcium or vitamin D in her diet, the breast milk will get calcium from her bones to sacrifice her bones for the favor of the infant. So which diet, which is the proper diet for the mother breastfeeding her baby? The best diet is a lot of water and milk. The mother should drink a lot of milk for her breast milk to be equal or uh, 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 proper in the composition and proper in the quantity. This is unless the infant has cow's milk protein allergy. Okay. Few another barriers to breastfeeding. What do we mean by barriers? Obstacles. Well, some items will make the breastfeeding difficult. That's what we call it difficulties in the breastfeeding. Difficulties in the breastfeeding, there are items maybe at the maternal side, factors at the maternal side, and another factors at the infant side. At the maternal side, large breast, very small breast, small nibble, Inverted nibble, flat nibble, milk engorgement, cracked nibble, breast abscess. These are difficulties for breastfeeding to be dealt with one by one. And there are other factors give rise to difficulties in the breastfeeding at the infant side. Infants who have cleft lip, infants who have cleft palate, um, weak infant, weak suckers. These are these are some difficulties from the infant side, should be overcome. Yes. What about the infant which are weak suckers? What can we do for him? We can express the breast milk in a bottle and give him by spoon even. No, we will not sacrifice for the breast feeding. Yes. Those are the common barriers to the breast feeding. Another barrier or difficulties for the breast feeding is the lack of knowledge. Some mothers 
may, uh, um, may think that the breast feeding will give rise to distortion of the breast size, distortion of the breast shape will make the mother more obese because she has to drink more milk to have more uh, uh, advanced diet. But this is not true. We have to invest in our infants because they are the future. And the breast milk is the most important investment in infant's diet. These are the breast milk feeding. Again, as we said before, milk is the best diet. Milk is the best nutrition. And the nutrition is the fowl of life. We are discussing the milk. We have discussed the uh, breast milk feeding. And now we are going to discuss what Allah prepared for animals. What's called the fresh fluid animal milk. Another form of milk other than breast milk. What are fresh fluid animals? Animal milk are available in the market. There's cow's milk, there's buffalo milk, goat's milk, camel milk, and ass milk. You have a surprise. I will surprise you just after one or two minutes. Which one usually used out of those types of fresh fluid animal milk? The cow's milk is the commonest to be used. Buffalo milk is used in certain areas of the world. Goat's milk also used in other areas. Camel milk is used in Gulf areas, and ass milk is used in a uh, uh, few areas. We will discuss first the cow's milk, which is the most important fresh fluid animal milk used for infants and for adults. What is the difference between the human milk and the cow's milk? What do you think? For sure, the human milk is bitter for human, and the cow's milk is bitter for cows. This is what Allah prepared for animals, so it is suitable for animals. But what is the difference between human and cow's milk? This figure will give us some uh, 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 information about the difference regarding the quantities. Do you see? This is the human milk. The protein content is less than the cow's milk. That's why the cow's infant is much bigger than the infants, the human infants. The lactose content is less in cow's milk than in human milk. And the fat content is nearly the same. This is, is this the only difference? No. This, this difference regarding the quantities, what about the qualities, is a major difference. We will see. For the protein composition, the breast milk, as we said before, the human milk containing about 70% whey protein and about 30 to 35% casein protein. This ratio is reversed in the cow's milk. More casein protein, about 80%, and less whey protein, about 20%. This is not the only difference regarding the protein. Casein content in the cow's milk is higher, much higher than the human milk, which gives rise to thick curd, difficult to be digested by the human being. And even the whey protein, the whey component of the protein, it containing abundance of lactoglobulin, which gives rise to allergy. This is important? Yes, this is important. So, regarding the protein, which is more suitable for the human being? For sure, the breast milk protein. Regarding the quantity and regarding the quality. Also, the protein in the cow's milk does not contain all essential amino acids. Some essential and semi-essential amino acids are lacking in the cow's milk. Difficult to be digested. Difficult to be absorbed. More liable for, aller for allergy. And also the immunological components of the breast milk and the protein are lacking in the cow's milk. Because we usually use in cow's milk after boiling. Boiling will destroy the anti-infective properties, if any, if present in the cow's milk. So the protein content, we have to raise our head for the breast milk protein. Another important difference is, this table will represent the difference between the human milk and the cow's milk. This is the lactose, lactose content, as we said before, as we saw in the previous figure. The human milk containing more lactose than the cow's milk. The protein is more on the cow's milk than in the human milk, but of bad quality. Bad quality for human. Regarding the ashes, or another point, regarding the fat content, the fat content is nearly the same, but the quality is also different. The fat content in the cow's milk is rich in volatile fatty acids. Why volatile fatty acid? Is it important for the cows? Yes, because the cow depends on the what's called the rumination reflex. The, if you see a cow is eating or drinking, drink, drink and eat, eat and more, and every now and then it will regurgitate 
some of the content of the stomach to be sealed again and swallowed again. To regurgitate this and to do this mechanism, we need a volatile fatty acids. This volatile fatty acids will make a lot of gases in the stomach, so it is easily to be regurgitated. This is what's called the rumination reflex. This is suitable for the cows, but not suitable for us, not suitable for human. The fat content of the cow's milk is large globules. It is badly digested. The fat content in the cow's milk is poor in polyunsaturated essential fatty acids. So the fat content in the human milk is much, much better than the cow's milk for human being. What about the calcium and the phosphate? Looking at this figure, we find that the calcium, there is cow's milk containing a large amount of calcium, a large amount of phosphate. Is it suitable for us? No. Although the large amount of calcium and phosphate are there in the cow's milk, the ratio is much more important than the level itself. Do you remember, and you will see in the presentation of, like, of records, inshallah, that the calcium to be absorbed, the calcium phosphate ratio should be optimal. And this optimal ratio is nearly 1.8 to 1, which is not here. Although the calcium phosphate are less in the human milk, but the ratio, calcium phosphate ratio, is optimal for its absorption. This is another important point. We are not relying on the level only, but the level and the ratio, the other cofactors, help in digestion and absorption. Another important issue to talk about, the iron content. The iron content in the cow's milk may be slightly higher than the iron content of the breast milk. However, the iron absorption in the breast milk is much, much more than the iron absorption in the cow's milk. Do you remember the iron we have received in the diet? We usually absorb about 10 to 30 percent of the iron given in the diet. In the breast milk, we absorb more than 50 percent of the iron given. Why this increment? Because there's what's called the lactoferrin, another system for absorption of iron. Lactoferrin is a protein carrying iron and oxygen and, and transport uh, uh, this iron through the intestinal wall, through the duodenum to the circulation. This is another system, another mechanism for iron absorption. So in spite of iron, it seems to be less, but its absorption is much higher. Okay? This is important points to know because we are going to supplement the infant with breastfeeding, I will tell you later on that iron is not needed before four to six months of age. In spite, the amount may seem to be low, but its absorption is higher. Calcium and phosphate it is not needed usually before four to six months of age. In spite of, it seems to be lower than the cow's milk, but the ratio is optimal for its absorption. Vitamins, as we said before, it seems that vitamin C and vitamin D are less, but its absorption is optimal. So the cow's milk is suitable for the cow's infant. And the breast milk is suitable for the breast milk. We saw now the difference between cow's milk and the breast milk. Difference regarding the quantities, different regarding the qualities. Even as we said, protein as a quality, the breast milk is much, much better. Fat, much, much better. Carbohydrate, much, much better. Everything in the breast milk is much better than the cow's milk and more suitable for the infants rather than other forms of milk. We talked before at the anti-infective properties, the immunological function. We said that the anti-infective properties and the immunological function of the breast milk is excellent and it is not there in the cow's milk. Because as I told you before, these functions and this element, immunological elements, are heat labile, will be destroyed by heating. And the cow's milk should not be used without heating, without boiling. So this will destroy the anti-infective properties or anti-infective elements if it is there. So the breast milk is the best. Again, breast is the best. This was about the cow's milk. What about the other types of milk? Buffalo milk, nearly similar to, more or less similar to the cow's milk, but it is more fatty. That's why the buffalo milk is usually yellowish in color, and the cow's milk whitish in color. This yellowish in color because it contains more fat content. The goat's milk, goat's milk, okay, more or less similar also to the cow's milk, but it is responsible for folate deficiency. Now to the surprise, which is the nearest to the human milk? The ass milk is the nearest milk to a human. Is it a surprise for you? Yes. The ass milk, regarding the composition, regarding the quantities, 
are more closely to the breast milk composition rather than other forms of milk. So the question is why it is not used uh, widely? Because it should be utilized fresh and the, the number of uh, ass and donkeys are less in the world. That's why the cow's milk are still used, but the cow's milk is not the nearest milk to human milk, but it is the most widely used form of milk. Another important issue, talking about fresh fluid animal milk, we discussed the different forms of fresh fluid animal milk. And we decided to use the cow's milk. Now, the issue is how many ml we can give to the infant per feed, and how frequent is how can we calculate this? This is the question. Okay, we decided to give, to use the cow's milk. How many ml I can give my infant? This ml we can use per feed to the infant depending on two ways. Either correct way according to the caloric requirement, we'll discuss it later, and another rough idea and rough way to calculate how many ml per feed. We can roughly use the age method what is the age method? In the first day, usually 10 ml per feed. The second day, 20 ml per feed. Till the seventh day, it is 70 ml per feed. In the seventh day, this is the first week. The second week, 80 ml per feed. The third week, 90. The fourth week, 100 ml per week. This is the rule of 10 by age. The fourth week is the first month. So the second month, 110 ml per feed. The third month, 120. The fourth month, 130, etc. This is a rough idea, depend on the age, irrespective of the weight, irrespective of the caloric requirements. The rule of 10. There is another most important, which is the caloric method. We have to know that each 100 ml milk containing 67 calories. So I decide the, how many calories the infant needs. Usually in the first three months of life, need about 100 to 120 kilocalories per day. So I can adjust. I need 100 calories per kg per day. So I can get it from how many ml of milk. As we will see the slide, a few, a few slides after this. The caloric requirement in the first three months of life, 100 to 120 calories per kg per day. And after that, it's usually around 100 calories per kg per day. Why this method is preferred? Because we have some infants, those with marasmus. Marasmus is a form of malnutrition. Needs higher calories needs calories may reach up to 150 to 200 calories per kg per day. So I can adjust the amount of milk according to the caloric needs. Some other malnutrition as kosher core. There is high calories already. So the caloric requirement for kosher core it is less than normal. It is about 90 calories per kg per day. So I can, by this way, I can feed normal infant, I can feed those with high caloric needs, and I can feed those with low caloric needs. So the caloric method is better to be used. 100 ml containing 67 calories. So how many calories I'm going, uh, I'm going to give to, the, to this infant? To, uh, how many ml equivalent? We will see in the slide, next slide. What's expected if I give the patients either by the age method or by caloric method? It is expected in the first three months of life, if there is normal growth, to achieve 25 to 30 gram per day at the weight gain, on the next three months, uh, 15 to 20 gram per day, and uh, uh, later on till the end of the first year, about 10 to 15 gram per day. That's what's called, we have uh, a term called test feed. If I'm going to testing the weight regarding the feeds, how many grams acquired per feed, how can I do this? This is what's called the test feed. I can weight the infant before the feeding and after, and repeat this six times per day and repeat this for three successive days, and I take the average. This is the average weight gain. The average weight gain, usually according to the age, 25 to 30 in the first three months, and so on. So this is how many ml given to the infant. I will uh, uh, give you uh, the, the uh, yes, this is the slide. How can we uh, uh, give, how many ml given to the infant by caloric method? This is 100 ml milk contains 67 calories. So if I'm going to give this infant 110 calories per kg per day, so how many ml will give rise to these calories? So I can multiply 100 by my 110 over 67, 
multiplied by six if I'm going him six feeds per day. So the number will emerge is how many ml given per kg per feed. This is the caloric method. It is easy to calculate. Now, back again, we are dealing with the fresh fluid animal milk. We talked about the different types. We talked about how many ml should be given to the infant. And the second question is, what, what about the frequency? How frequent is? Before the frequency was till the age of two weeks, we usually give the infant the feeding every two hours. From two weeks to four months of age, we usually give the infant every three hours. After four months of age, we, give, we usually give him four hourly. But nowadays, recently, the patient should be given the feed as, as much as he needs, upon his requirement. But usually guided by the previous schedule. So when the infant to cry, but try to make sure that this crying is due to hunger. Because there are physiological cause of crying and the pathological cause of crying. Okay? This is another important point also. What is the difference between the stool character between breastfed infant and formula fed infant or uh, infant fed by fresh fluid animal milk? The question is, why we choose the stool? Because the stool represents the GIT tolerability. This is milk given through the GIT. How can I assist the GIT can tolerate this milk or that milk through the frequency of the stool, through the nature of the stool, the texture of the stool, the physical character of the stool. For the breastfed infant, it is expected to have one motion for every feed. It's another issue. This motion is usually golden yellow in color, never to be constipated. Why the breastfed infant expected to have one motion for every feed? Because the breast milk is a good stimulus for the gastrocolic reflex. Once the breast milk in the stomach will initiate the reflex to evacuate the colon. So infant, breastfed infant, never be constipated. And the stool, usually golden yellow in color. Then semi-solid stool. The formula fed infant or infant uh, fed by fresh flowed animal milk, the stool usually pale yellow in color and usually around three to four times per day. So from the stool character, I can know, I can guess this is breastfed infant or artificial fed infant. Another important question is after choosing the milk to feed my baby, after determining the amount to be given per feed, after determining the frequency to be given to my infant, how can I assess the adequacy of this feeding? Is this feeding satisfactory or not? Is my infant satisfied or not? The satisfaction of uh, uh, feeding should be uh, uh, learned from these four items. If the infant sleep after feeding, proper weight gain, good bowel habits, good urine flow, this means satisfaction, sufficient, adequate feeding. If the infant does not sleep after feed, constipating, oligoria, no proper weight gain, this means unsatisfaction. The infant is not satisfied by the feeding, either breast feeding or the artificial feeding. Another important practical point, how to report breast feeding in the history. When I'm talking a history from the mother, how I report this? It is not accepted to say that this infant is breastfed infant. Follow stop. No, this is deficient history. If I'm going to take a history regarding breastfeeding, I should ask the mother, breastfed or fresh fluid animal fit, or formula fit infant, or weaned infant. For the breast fit infant, I should ask the mother, how many, uh, 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 one or two breasts at a time? I should ask the mother, for how long is the process of feeding per time? I should ask the mother, how many times per day? I should ask the mother, are there signs of satisfaction or not? So reporting this, I will tell you, this infant is breast fit infant. One breast at a time, for 20 minutes, six times per day, with signs of satisfaction. So this is full informative history. Okay? Also, for the formula fed infant, we'll discuss it later. Okay. So how to report the breast feeding in the history. Because most, some of the diseases are usually related to the process of feeding itself. Failure to thrive may be related to underfeeding. Marasmus, 
mal feeding, kosher core, mal feeding, rickets, problems in the feeding. So when I taking a dietetic history or the feeding history properly, I can reach to most of the diseases related to that issue. Uh, these are the criteria of underfeeding. We discussed it just now. Uh, this is the fresh. We are now in the fresh fluid animal milk. Yeah. Don't forget the map. The first is the breast milk feeding. We discussed a few issues about the breast, details about the breast milk itself, and some about feeding practice. And we shifted to the other issue, which is the fresh fluid animal milk. We discussed which type we can use, the cow's milk, how many ml per feed, how frequent is, what are the signs of satisfaction. Important questions to be raised up. This cow's milk and this fresh fluid animal milk, it is much less in quality than the breast milk. Can we make the quality nearer to the human milk? Yes, we can modify this composition. How can we modify this composition? These are the modifications of raw milk. We can modify the fresh fluid animal milk by addition of water, addition of acids, addition of alkali, boiling, evaporation, homogenization, hydrolyzation. What are these? Addition of water, addition of acids, addition of alkali will break down large globules into small globules. Homogenization means forcing the milk to pass through narrow holes will also break down the large fat globules and the protein globules into small globules to be easily digested. Easily digest. And what's meant by hydrolyzation? This is enzymatic degradation of tough objects. What does it mean? The protein content in the cow's milk is thick, large globules, difficult to be digested. If I add enzyme to this protein, they may hydrolyze this protein partially to give rise to what's called partially hydrolyzed protein. If I add more enzymes, I can hydrolyze this protein, make degradation to be more. This is what's called extensively hydrolyzed protein. If I add more enzymes, I can uh, make this protein as simple amino acids, what's called amino acid-based formula or amino acid-based milk. So I may interfere in the quality and in the quantity. Important issues, if I have the fresh fluid cow's milk and evaporated most of its water content, this milk is called evaporated or condensed milk. This is the milk available in the supermarket. If we remove all the water content, this is the dried powdered milk. So the formula milk, the dried powdered milk is modified cow's milk. Just removal of the water. This is the dried powdered milk. Addition of the water, this is reconstruct again to the cow's milk. But while removing the water, we can make some modifications. If I found it deficient in vitamin D, I can add vitamin D. I can add calcium. I can remove salts. I can modify the protein. I can modify the fat. I can make the fat the palmitate on the second uh, carbon in the glycerol rather than the first and third carbon. These are the modifications and these are the special formulas later on. These are the basis for the formula feeding. So the formula milk, it is not a new milk, it is a cow's milk. But the water content is removed completely. So the remaining is the dried and the powdered milk. And while removing the water and the addition of the water, some modifications happened and occurred. It's important points to know. You know the difference between boiling and pasteurization? Do you know the difference? What's boiling? Boiling the milk? Huh? Do you know the difference? You have to know the difference. Boiling the milk, I should see the bubbles on the surface of the milk, on the surface of the fluid. The bubbles, not only the vapor, the, the bubbles should be bubbled. And when the milk is going to be boiled, it should be boiled with a stirring for 10 minutes to take the benefits of boiling. So bubbles on the surface of the milk, continuous tiring after seeing these bubbles for 10 minutes. Pasteurization is another method. We are heating the milk to a certain degree and sudden cooling of the milk. Which is better? Uh, and I, I think boiling is better than pasteurization. And another message. When the infant is taking fresh fluid animal milk, pasteurized form, every pasteurized milk should be boiled before used by the infant. So I can use, I can get the benefit of both. Okay, this is an uh, important point. So now, the third item after fresh fluid animal feeding, fresh fluid animal milk feeding, this is the formula feeding. 
that's once prepared by human for human. As I told you before, the, this is simply cow's milk in which the water is removed. So this is dry, uh, dried powdered milk. And during removal of the fluids and addition of the fluids, we can make some modifications to make it nearer to human milk. That's what's called the humanized formula. And we can use acidified formulas. We will make acidification for this formula. And we can use special formulas. What's meant by humanized formula? Formula near to the human milk. What's meant by acidified formula and why they are making acidification? Acidified formula is better for calcium absorption, is better for digestion and absorption. How we can make this acidification? It is better to be made biologically. What do we mean by biologically? We can add uh, yeast. Fermentation of this yeast will give rise to acids. And this acid is a biological. Why this acid is biological? The acid will increase, the acid level increase in the milk till reaching a certain level and it will inhibit the bacteria producing it. So it will reach the level optimal for this bacteria and this level is optimal for us. This is the mechanism of yogurt formation. So yogurt is very good, is an example of acidified formula. You give the milk and put yeast. What yeast will, will, will give rise to? Lactose will be converted into lactic acid. Excessive amount of lactic acid? No. The lactic acid will increase up to a certain level. Then it will inhibit the yeast. This level is suitable for us. It's suitable for the commensal bacteria in our intestine. That's why azure is one of the best artificial formula should be used. Uh, special infant formulas, removing the water and re-addition of the water again, is usually associated with modifications. We can modify the milk as we need, according to our needs. How are we can modify? First thing, we will modify the protein content of this cow's milk. How can we modify this protein content? I can make a formula, partially hydrolyzed formula. What do, what do I mean by partially hydrolyzed formula? I am adding enzymes to destroy the protein partially. Extensively hydrolyzed formulas. What is this? More enzymes to hydrolyze protein more. I have amino acid based formula. What is this? The protein content in the form of amino acids. These are the formulas, very important formulas to be used in the cow's milk protein allergy. Cow's milk protein allergy is found to be one of the most common allergies in infants in the first two years of life. So, if I'm going to prevent it, it is better to use partially hydrolyzed formula. If I'm going to treat it, either extensively hydrolyzed formula or amino acid based formula. This is important. These are three different formulas. This modified for special formulas. Another special formula which is called the soya based formula. Soya based formula, we replace the, the protein of animal origin by protein of plant origin. And also this formula is devoid of lactose. So it is the best formula to be used in lactose intolerance and in galactosemia. Another message, nowadays, no rules for soya based formula in cow's milk protein allergy. Because a lot of research is also running in this issue. To prevent cow's milk protein allergy, it's better to use partially hydrolyzed formula. To treat cow's milk protein allergy, it is better to use extensively hydrolyzed formula in mild to moderate cases or amino acid based formula in severe cases. This is important message. Okay, this number one. There is what's called lactose free formula. Lactose free formula, do we need it? Yes. We're in galactosemia and lactose intolerance. What mean by lactose intolerance? The patient has deficiency in lactase enzyme. So once he received lactose, lactose will be fermented in the intestine, not absorbed. There is no lactase enzyme. Will be fermented in the intestine, and this fermentation will give rise to two gases, abdominal distension, colic, and diarrhea. So the best way is to give him lactose-free formula. This is a special formula. I can, while modifying the cow's milk, I can remove the lactose. Okay, this is easy. While I'm going to remove the water, I will remove also the lactose to be a formula, lactose-free formula. Another formula, as we, as we said before, protein hydrolysate formulas, just, we have just mentioned. And I can also make a formula, low solute formula. I can remove the salt content to make the formula less salty for those hypertensive infants. I can make it more salty for those hypotensive infants. You see how are the modifications I can use? I can modify the formula to be high energy formula. High energy fiber enriched formula. High energy, low fiber formula. 
low energy fiber enriched formula. Any modification I can, I can form, I can make a form for diabetics. Diabetic formula, there is. A formula for renal failure, renal failure f uh, formula. Phenylalanine free formula. Extensively hydrolyzed formula, amino acid based formula, partially hydrolyzed formulas. Soya bean formulas. So we can modify anything, but still breast is the best. Still, we try to be near to the human milk. This is the humanized formula. But special formats is used in a special situations, according to the circumstances, according to the needs. If I have an infant with phenyl, uh, phenyl ketonuria, what shall we use? Breast milk is absolutely contraindicated. I shall use a special formula, phenyl alanine free formula. If I have a, an infant with galactosemia or lactose intolerance, breast milk is absolutely contraindicated. What shall we use? A special formula, lactose free formula. Patient hypertensive, it is better to use low salt formula. Diabetic, diabetic formula, and so on. These are the special formulas. These are examples for the lactose free formula, and this is soya based, based formula. We have just discussed uh, some issues about it, and the protein hydrolysate formula. And this is examples also for the low solute formula. Sodium content are, uh, is low, also is potassium, chloride, calcium, phosphate, and iron content is low. Uh, special formulas regarding the protein, as we discussed before. <coughs> so now we discussed all the items of milk are there. Breast milk, fresh fluid animal milk, and artificially milk, or dried powdered milk. Out of those types of milk, which is the best? Again, breast is the best. But we may need special formula in a special circumstances. If we are going to use fresh fluid animal milk, cow's milk is the one to be used, trying to modify as much as we can try to ensure the uh, sterilization techniques, try to add water to modify the globule content, and there is some modifications also for to be used, if to be used with the breastfeeding. Important issue to talk about it, what the difference between supplementary feeding and complementary feeding? This is different and has a practical importance. Complementary feedings means that the infant can complete his feed, can take his feed, part by the breast milk and the other part by the other milk. So it will complete his feed from both types of milk. Now what's meant by supplementary feeding? He take a full feed breast and another full feed artificial. This is supplementary. What is the importance and what is the practical issue in this part? When I'm going to give the infant complementary feeding, which to be given first? The breast milk or the artificial milk? And what type of artificial milk I should use? This important point. And what about the tit to be given to the infant? For complementary feeding, breast feeding should be given first. And I have to choose the artificial milk which is not sweetened, humanized formula humanized milk, near to the human milk as much as we can. And the, the tit, the bottle, the tit should be narrow to imitate the nibble and give the breast milk first. If you do not uh, take care uh, about these items, the infant will refuse the breastfeeding. Suppose I give the infant sweetened formula and the, the tit is wide, so it is easier for the infant, for the infant to get this formula. Shall he, uh, he will uh, eager to have a breastfeeding? No. If you are going to give him a breastfeeding, which is difficult, slightly difficult for him, no, he will refuse, trying to take the artificial formula, which is sweetened and easily. The tit is wide tit. So this a lot amount of milk will be ejected uh, uh, per time. These are the milk. Breast milk feeding, fresh fluid animal milk, and dried or powdered milk. Now we come to another important uh, area, which is the weaning, weaning a practice. What's the definition of weaning? Weaning means introduction in the infant diet, food other than milk. And the statement will be raised up here, weaning is an art. Answering these questions will answer everything about weaning. When to start weaning? When to postpone? When to complete, how to do, what are the complications? 
answering the questions, will finalize the weaning practice. Introduction of solid foods or introduction of food other than milk in the infant uh, uh, diet is an important issue. Usually, we start at the age of four to six months. The question is, why four to six months? Why not earlier? Why not later? Usually, that age, the breast milk is not sufficient by itself, need uh, uh, other elements to cope for the growth and development. And by that age, usually the patient have neurological maturations and gastrointestinal maturation. What do we mean by gastrointestinal maturation? The gastrointestinal system is ready for digestion and absorption of most of the food stuff. And what do we mean by neurological maturation? This infant can sit down, can uh, use the uh, food by himself, can, there is coordinated contraction of the pharyngeal muscles, proper mastications, and so on. So usually we start by the age of four to six months or when the infant weight reach six kilograms, which comes earlier. A lot of researchers nowadays told us that early weaning a practice is not advised because it may give rise to allergy. So we have to postpone it as much as we can, but provide the infant take sufficient amount of milk and if it was breast uh, uh, milk feeding, the mother should be good nourished. These are the precautions to start to know about uh, the weaning practice before starting. Another issue is uh, when to postpone. Weaning should be postponed in the summer months during epidemics if the infant is sick. So when I'm going to start uh, a weaning practice, it is better to start in the winter when the infant reaches four to six months of age. There is no epidemics in the community and the patient's health is good. This is the best way to start. How can I start? The general guidelines for the weaning start one food item by one food item. And if I'm going to one food item to start with, start with this food item, diluted, small amount, minced, then increasing the amount and increasing the concentration gradually over one or two weeks. Then after that, we can start another food item. The important issues also in that uh, uh, weaning practice, the infant suppose have six feeds per day. I'm gonna replace the first feed by another solid food. Okay, daily, I'll give at the same time, the same time of food, the same type of food, and try to increasing the amount, increasing the concentration. Okay, so the, at that time, he received a solid food other than the milk. If I'm going to add another uh, uh, solid food, I can skip one uh, dietary milk and give it after that. So the infant has solid food, then uh, milk diet, then solid food, then milk diet, then solid food, and so on. For the weaning practice to be better. Not, it, is, it is not advised for the solid items, for the new items to be following each other's. It is better to be separated by a diet milk, a milk diet. Okay, so these are the items. Another important point, when can I give the infant juice? The infant could be given juice, juice could be introduced to the infant diet if the infant can drink from the cup. Another important issue, when can I give the infant uh, meat, protein? As long as the teeth start to erupt, this sign means that the intestine is ready for digestion and absorption of the meat. So this herald the uh, introduction of meat. But when I'm going to introduce the meat in the infant diet, it is better to be first in the plant origin, beans, etc. Then to be from the animal or uh, origin, the poultry and chickens, then from the animal origin like meats. And the, the meat given to the infant should be minced meat first, small amount increasing it gradually and easily digested. This is the, for the meat. Uh, another important point, giving juice to the infant, it is better to be fresh juice. As we will see later on, that additives, coloring agents, flavoring agents is prohibited, should be prohibited from the infant diet. If I'm going to give him a juice, this should be fresh juice, freshly prepared and freshly utilized. And when can I give him juice, introduce juice for him? when the infant can drink by himself from the cup. This also a sign that his intestine is ready to deal with such juice. 
However, an important point, juice cannot replace milk. Juice is not as equivalent to milk or the formula. Okay? Introducing solid food, a few other advices also. Egg white should be postponed after one year, the first birthday. Peanut, popcorn, hot dogs, it is better to be postponed after the second birthday. Because these elements are complex protein, complex elements, which may give rise to allergy. You know, the intestinal gates or the intestinal barrier in the first year of life is not so good. So some protein may pass as such through these barriers. Then they will stimulate the immune system to produce antibodies against this protein, which may give rise to uh, allergy later on. That's why you hear about this infant as an allergy to egg. Before, he, he was not allergic to egg, but now he is. Uh, uh, has an allergy to shrimp. Why? If you are going deep in the history, you find that the mother usually give him shrimp in the first year of life. The whole egg in the first year of life. Mostly. If it is not inherited. Uh, uh, salt intake is an important. The salt should be adjusted for the infant. Knowing that the test bud in the tongue uh, uh, in the infant is double than that of the adult. So he can taste very good. And usually the infant tastes by, sp by spilling, spitting. This spitting means he is tasting the, the food. Not he is refusing, no. He is tasting the food. So the taste should be adjusted. No more salts, no less salts. You can test it first and adjust the test, you can give it to the infant. Okay. Food additives, as we said before, flavors and uh, coloring agents should be prohibited. May give rise to allergic disorders, may give rise to uh, uh, headache, uh, hyperkinesia, uh, urticaria, angioedema, etc. Should be prohibited even for uh, non-feeding infants, for others. This is a, a lot of question marks about the flavors and, uh, and the coloring agents for infants and even children. May be responsible for most of the hyperkinesia we usually see in children nowadays. The uh, 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 feeding problems when trying to wean the infant, a lot of complications may arise. Um, such complications may be underfeeding, uh, may be overfeeding. Uh, maybe regurgitations, uh, vomiting, uh, ruminations, uh, may have diarrhea, may have constipations, may have colicky pains, may have an allergy. Uh, the patient may be obese or may be marasmic or may be kosher core. This because of the malfeeding practice. Because you have to know that the infant, when I'm going to win the infant, I should introduce a balanced diet for that infant. Uh, as we said, these are the problems usually encountered while weaning. At the end of this presentation, remember the uh, uh, questions we have asked in the first presentation. After delivery, oral glucose should be given regularly, two hourly, for 12 hours. Is it true or false? This is for sure false. If I am going to give a glucose, oral glucose should be given once. Why once? Because if this patient has tracheosophageal fistula, glucose is much safer than other forms of milk. It will give rise to choking, so I will discover, I will be aware that there are tracheosophageal fistula. Stop feeding until further investigations. However, the new recommendations is breastfeeding should be started immediately after delivery, even without glucose, oral glucose. But this uh, uh, maneuver should be prohibited. Okay? Preparation of the breastfeeding start immediately after delivery. No, this is false. As we said before, preparation of the breast for feeding start, should start before conception. Breast milk composition depends on the intake. True or false? Usually false. Few modifications occur with the intake. But the usual composition is nearly fixed. Sick mother should not breast her baby. This is false. This is a relative contraindication. It depends on the disease, it depends on the severity, it depends on the circumstances. Breastfeeding is a reliable method of contraception. True, if it is round the clockwise, day and night. If it is not, this may affect the efficacy of the breast milk as a contraceptive. Feeding should be given round the clockwise. Yes, it is better to be so. And it is better if I use it as a contraceptive method. Unmodified cow's milk can be given before the first birthday? False. It is advised for the unmodified cow's milk to be postponed after the first birthday. 
because the cow's milk protein allergy is one of the major issues in the first year of life. Formula feeding is better than the breast feeding? False. Because formula feeding is less in quantity and quality compared to the breast feeding. And again, the breast is the best. Weaning should be started as early as possible? False. It is better to start at four to six months of age and you have to select the proper time and the proper condition and the proper circumstances to start with. Finally, uh, you have to rem uh, remember that the five statements we raised up during this presentation, that the first one, nutrition is the fowl of life. Agree. The second one, milk is the best nutrition, and milk is the best diet, milk is the single complete diet. The third one, Breast is the best. The fourth statement, suckling is not suctioning. It's completely different. Weaning is an art. Thank you very much.